Hey, that's um, obviously a lot of people who watch the videos that I do on photography aren't interested in the videos that I do on field theory um, and vice versa. Sometimes, obviously so, they certainly do overlap because what is photography other than, uh, of course, if you're a master photography expert in uh, composition and light manipulation. Now, it is an absolute undeniable fact that every part in human history has always thought that they had a correct handle on uh, the nature of the universe. Uh, believe it or not, however, <laughs> and uh, this is easily provable, um, the ancient Platonists, the Pythagoreans, and some uh, Neoplatonic Platonists, which is why I translate ancient Greek, and have been doing so for many years, including ancient uh, Prakrit, um, had a far, far, far better grasp of cosmic mechanics than we do now. I mean, they literally sat around. I mean, they weren't worried about paying bills and property taxes and buying the latest microwave or DSLR camera. And uh, all you need to do is isolate yourself and have a very logical brain. And there is an ancient lost art, and uh, I plan on writing a book about it, as well as I've written many articles about it. And it's called uh, abduction, or retroduction, not like you abduct a child. It is a type of uh, thinking methodology, whereby which very abstruse principles of uh, non-linear comprehension of uh, ontological uh, um, principles can be understood or grasped. Now, getting to the point of light. Now, it is true that there really only are two people that are intelligent in this world. And, uh, and I don't mean wise, I'm just talking about intelligent. There is a large group of sheep bah, that uh, you're brought up and brainwashed that Einstein was a really, really intelligent person. But it turns out that Einstein was a moron. By the way, in German, Einstein means one stone, which is, uh, is a slant, meaning you've got only a couple rocks in your head. Einstein, one stone. Although the, the uh, name Einstein actually means idiot, by the way. How ironic. Um, Einstein was a moron. Okay. Now, who are you going to trust? There are only two factions in this world. The guy that loved peace and that invented 100% of the modern world and that would be Nikola Tesla, okay? The guy that actually understood much of how the universe works. Unfortunately, two gigantic trunks of uh, his dynamic theory of, uh, of fields was lost forever and uh, is admitted to be owned by the government. And I forget what laboratory they admitted holding it at, but they won't release it. So, and then there's another person who didn't invent anything. Now, he did get a Nobel Prize, not for relativity, which is still a theory. And by the way, that theory uh, has far less credence today, even among his, uh, his uh, lovers, than it did, say, 30, 40 years ago. That is extremely telling. Uh, he did get a Nobel Prize um, for something else. Now, it is true that accurate observations do not translate into uh, accurate explanations. The photoelectric effect. You probably don't know what it was. I mean, I've written about it in my book on uh, magnetism. But uh, he made correct observations with incorrect conclusions. Now, the entire basis of uh, current uh, physical theory, physics, by the way, physical, is based upon the notion that the cosmic mechanics, or Mother Nature, if you will, is uh, an insane hooker on crack with a bag of magical particles. You see, they can never understand, nor can they explain instantaneous action at a distance, IAED, nor have they correctly explained light. Okay? There is no such thing as a wave-particle duality. As I've told you before already, every age of humanity, as far as its science goes, has always thought it was right, and 20, 30 years later, sometimes 40, 50, sometimes more, it's always proven. They look back and they go, oh, those guys were idiots. They had no idea. They were talking out of their asshole. 
Um, Einstein has set back uh, cosmic uh, mechanics understanding by a hundred years. He is actually starting to wane. I've actually noticed over the past 20 years that those who know who the hell Tesla was has gone like this. Those who understand that Tesla's comments about Einstein, about him being a fuzzy-haired uh, crackpot, and uh, the notion of curved space, which is nothing other than the absence of inertia, the notion that that is something that acts on something is an absurdity. It is equally the case that I could say a shadow would make someone cold if they sit in the shadow of the sun, but I cannot reify absence as something that does something. Uh, that is an intellectual fallacy. It is unwise, it is untrue, and it is, empirically so, not viable. You cannot reify absence. Someone can say, well, I tossed you out into the vacuum of space and you quickly died because there's no air there. Well, no air, absence of something, is not something that actually acts upon something. Absence itself is a posterior attribute of something else and it is relational. It is posterior. This is the fallacy of a composition whereby which one reifies absence as principle or subject. And this is the primary fallacy behind relativity and Einstein and all the idiots that believe in what Einstein taught. Tesla knew this was BS and crap. He said as much. The most meek person on the earth never would harm a soul. Said as much. Called him a fuzzy-haired crackpot. He said his followers were stronger of mind than and eventually the truth will shine out. And of course it will. Now, getting into breaking this into photography. Well, that sounds like a long stretch, right? Photographia. Photon. Photos. Light. If you think that the lens on your camera is a, uh, a light funnel that is funneling in particles to hit the back of your sensor or your film emulsion, then you, alas, have been sniffing the glue of quantum mechanics. There is no such thing as a wave particle duality, and there is not one bit of evidence in this entire universe for a photon. Not one! No one has ever witnessed a photon. No one has captured a photon. There is not one single shred of evidence on this entire Earth, present or hence, for the existence of a photon. Light is a coaxial circuit, a longitudinal dielectric with transverse electrical and magnetic components, just like the coaxial cable that feeds from your satellite dish to your TV, so on and so forth. A coaxial cable transverse electrical magnetic components and a longitudinal dielectric. Now let's get back to the idiot Einstein. Das idiot Einstein, but Einstein means idiot by the way, Einstein, one stone. He says, if we are faced with a new kind of difficulty, we have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, separately the particle and the wave theory, neither of them fully explains the phenomenon of light. But together they do. The photon is a purely arbitrary concept, folks. Einstein wrongly concluded that what that light was a discrete wave packet. Well, that's kind of an accurate observation. The conclusion, of course, is completely incorrect. And this is based simply upon nothing other than ancient Greek atomism or in our modern European uh, uh, what's closer to us and what it came from was Descartian atomism, Descartes. He called such a wave packet a light quanta. And that light quanta is that he refers to, which is the basis of particle physics. Um, here it's in the, it's uh, das liquant, yeah. Einstein wrongly concluded that light was a discrete wave packet. He called this wave packet the light quanta, or das liquant. Das liquant! <laughs> oh my god yeah you think particles are going through your lens and striking your sensor those particles are photons ah, so I guess if you're out shooting all day then you need to take the lens out and turn your camera upside down and shake the photons out right <laughs> now I give you the quote below that Tesla made and I found it and uh I had to do, I've done more research into everything Tesla ever said more than anybody else has. I was able to digitize some of his really rare writings and I was able to do digital searches uh, for what he talks about fields. 
See, he, the, the 800 pound gorilla that shits upon and squats upon the skulls of current uh, atomic atomistic uh, physics, which encompasses all of quantum mechanics, quantum quantity, i.e. physicality, i.e. particles, okay? Everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particles. Instantaneous action at a distance is real, okay? Now you're probably going to ask me about a solar sail. Now, how does a solar sail work? Obviously, it's photons. We know if we deploy a solar sail out in space uh, that there will be propulsion. It's not extremely fast, but it works. That must be uh, photons. No, do you know how that works? Do you know how a solar sail works? Um, that which you call magnetic repulsion works exactly the same way. Low magnetic permeability, okay? That which is also called a superconductor is nothing other than uh, a super dielectric yttrium barium, in the case of a yttrium barium copper oxide, a superconductor that's chilled down to the temperature of liquid nitrogen. It's not a superconductor, it is a super resistor. It is levitating a magnet. What happens is it obtains a state of ultra high low magnetic permeability. So it's not conducting anything. It has become super dielectric, which means just like bismuth, you know, I, I've, sh I've got some videos. I created the world's largest um, uh, diamagnetic levitator using about a thousand pounds and about ten thousand dollars worth of bismuth. You can actually find the video on my YouTube channel. Okay, so that's how a solar sail works. Okay, you notice that it's made out of foil and that it's reflective. Well, that's low magnetic permeability. That's uh, somewhat similar in your conceptual analogy of how magnetic repulsion would work. So, it's not photons that are pushing a solar sail along in space. It is low magnetic permeability, which causes force and motion resultantly due to the low magnetic permeability, due to the exposure of extreme amounts of light. Light, in fact, is DEM, dielectroelectromagnetic. It's a trifold circuit. Light is a coaxial circuit. If you hold the notion that there are particles that are passing through your camera lens and striking your filter, then you have been drinking the Kool-Aid and, uh, you know, how guilty you are is, you know, how much you've ever asked the question, what is a field? Well, fields have no quantity. Everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particles. This is what scares the crap. You can take the best, best, and all of them, I assure you of this, I will cut my heart out and sit right here and put it before you if I'm wrong. You could ask the best quantum physicist in the whole world, just round them up, the best top ten of them. Say, listen bitches, you're all going to die in two hours unless you can tell me exactly what a field is. You know what will happen? You know, that'll be it for them. They'll never, they have no idea what a field is. Because you cannot quantify a field. They can qualify a field, but that's qualification. But also descriptions are never explanations. Well, a field has the property of this and this and this. At a certain region it does this and it acts at a... That's a description. That's not an explanation. One thing the ancient Greeks were masters of that we are complete mental midgets on is that we cannot understand that, well, he gave an explanation of the, you know, what a field is. I've got it right here in this book. No, that's a description. This is something the ancient Greeks were really, really good at. And they would have pointed out to you immediately, uh, no, you have given a description, sir. A description is not an explanation. See, you can get descriptions from children. And, uh, you know, you could show a child something amazing, some sort of neat little scientific gadget. And uh, they'll tell you, well, it's this wide and this long, and it does this and this and this. And I stuck a voltmeter here, and I got a certain reading and a certain amperage. And you could write a whole book about what something does and how it acts and responds. But that is a description, not an explanation. And that is exactly where current physics exists when it comes to... The 800 pound gorilla that shits right on top of their head, and that is the word field. Not its connotation, not its description, but its explanation. Descriptions are not explanations, so. If you suffer under the delusion that photons are traveling 
you know, from here to there and so on and so forth, or that your lens is gathering photons, then you have been smoking the hippie crack of atomism. It is a mind virus and a sick uh, pseudo-intellectual mental midget delusion that has existed for thousands of years. Um, earliest records go back to the ancient Greeks, the most recent revival of which was Descartes. And all of this is doomed to failure because everything is fields and fields are not particles. Thank you. Come again. And oh, by the way, if you'd like to debate me on any one of these things that I've mentioned in this video, I've spent more time and research on field theory than everybody watching my channel combined times a thousand. I love to debate, and by debate, I don't mean argue, I mean debate. And please, uh, please, uh, you know, amuse me and yourself by let's engaging in a debate on field theory, because I love to debate it, and I guarantee you, I will destroy you in the discussion on field theory. Absolutely, unequivocally, without any hesitation. Let's do it. I love to debate field theory. Okay? <laughs> Catch you later. Lux Iveritas.